Ah, uh, yeah, buddy. Welcome back to a another episode. Another week has gone by, and uh, your friends here at Sonic Weekly, we're back. The only Sonic the Hedgehog podcast in the world. Maybe that's not true, but we definitely do keep to our name where we talk to guests and ourselves about Sonic the Hedgehog once every seven days or so. My name's Grant, but uh, I'm not alone. We've got a full cast of characters with us every week and a special guest uh, on this episode as well. So let's check in with uh, the director of uh, Burning Rain- Rangers Development, the uh, king of the Ring of Rings of Saturn. It's Bo. Hi, Bo. Here we go, buddy. Hey, did we ever figure out who plays that flute loop? We got to check the credits on that. We do, because that is a that is kind of like iconic to the show's, you know, intro theme, uh, which is solely on a new city from Sonic the Hedgehog, parentheses 2006. So if it was you, please email us. Uh, and speaking of email, hi, Smoothies. Welcome back. Speaking of email, right. Um, <laughs> hi. It's good to be back. Yeah. You send emails, right? We met over email. Oh, that's right. We did. You, one of you jokingly said, hey, uh, if you want to edit, email us. And so I did. And wow, here we are. <laughs> you, get, you force yourself in and you will not leave. No one will let you. And it's uh, the star uh. of the show, Out from the Shadows and Into the Headlines in the Spotlight. It's David the Lurker. Whoa. Hi, David. Oh, hello. Uh, that's me. Right. I'm always coming up from behind because um, I get scared easily and I need to be protected at all times. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because, heck, right. I would, I'm definitely feeling afraid. Why is that? Because there is somebody in here who I feel like I am woefully unprepared to introduce. And that's why Grant always introduced the guests. Hey, it's not just because of the guest. It's just because it's a guest. Never fear. Uh, <laughs> great, great toss back to me. That was yeah. good. Uh, I'm terrified. <laughs> back to Grant. Yes. Uh, as you've seen in the, the show title, uh, we have Jordan Morris with us. You may know Jordan from his robust IMDb page with his uh, writing and acting credits, but also notably the Jordan Jesse Go podcast, which is a personal favorite of mine. Uh, and uh, probably our dear listeners. Also, uh, hi, Jordan. <laughs> hey, hey, hi, everybody. Great to talk with you. Sonic 3D Blast sucks. Oh, <laughs> my God, right? Starting right off. Can we just start talking about how much it sucks? Yeah. Oh, you're here to break my heart today. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't even, you know, I didn't even consider. Yeah, this is a debate format lincoln okay. douglas oh, wow. so mm-hmm. you're lincoln smoothies is douglas oh my gosh I've already, <laughs> yeah. i'm already i'm already playing the heel i guess maybe i should just lean into it <laughs> why are you nerds talking about sonic every week get one <laughs> learn how to get laid i don't know how do you, how does that work is it talking i mean the recent scott pilgrim anime uh, showed me that talking about sonic the hedgehog is definitely the best way to introduce yourself for a romantic. <laughs> well, only after you've done it a few times. It's a retcon, right? That wasn't the original conversation in the comic, right? He was talking about something else. Right. Pac-Man in the movie. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Everyone likes Pac-Man. That's so easy. If you if you get someone on the hook talking about Sonic, that's true love. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, you want to lead with that. And it's how you just weed out any undesirable romantic partners. If you start talking about Sonic and they seem confused or walk away, <laughs> which is not meant to be. Uh, my wife, uh, my dear darling wife, Ashlyn, uh, jokes, jokingly, that uh, I sprung the concept of me being a Sonic fan uh uh, until after we were married, she didn't realize it was in your wedding vows. <laughs> yeah, but it was just—it was just sort of dormant. Sickness or in health. Yeah, it was dormant, and then it—it it blossomed and grew. But one area that my Sonic love tree has never found an area of shade for underneath is Sonic 3D Blast. I agree with you; it sucks. I tried to play it in preparation of this episode. I once again could not finish playing through. I ended in a sort of a tedious boredom of just like, I know I got to do this homework, but maybe I just don't. Maybe I, maybe I won't. I, maybe other people have played it to completion. And I read the Wikipedia and talked with some friends about it. So I'm definitely interested in hearing, you know, why was Sonic 3D Blast, Jordan, um, sort of top of mind of, of like, where you, we were like, yeah, you should come do the show. What's a, what's a Sonic thing on your mind? You've talked about Sonic on podcasts like Get Played. You talked about Sonic 06. Yes. Uh, I know you're a Sonic kind of, I don't know if you, are you a Sonic fan or just somebody that's like, What's your relationship to Sonic and how did it begin? Uh, sure, do? yeah. I was definitely a Genesis kid. There were Nintendo kids and Genesis kids growing up. And then, you know, a few little 
Turbo Graphics kids off to the side, but you know, wait, you knew a Turbo Graphics kid? I did. I, I think Matthew you're Dudley. This whole thing up. My friend Matthew Dudley was a Turbo Graphics kid, and wow. he had Bonk's Adventure and Keith Courage in the Alpha Zone, and it was always kind of fun to go over to his house and like play this weird world of you know video games i had never heard of <laughs> yeah so that was uh yeah i have like fond memories of those turbo graphics games at matthew dudley's house but um i have not revisited them since uh but yes i was a genesis kid and like i remember like seeing a still photo of 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 sonic before it was out in electronic gaming monthly and just like it was just one of those things where like the colors and the design of the character just hooked me immediately. I think I would like call my local electronics boutique once a week to ask if like Sonic was out yet. Um, yeah. So I was just kind of like, you know, in it from the beginning and I, I, you know, got that first game you know, as soon as I possibly could and kind of followed the series through the Genesis. I had never played this. Um, and yeah, and I, you know, and I think I, 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 I became a PlayStation kid after, you know, the Sega consoles, you know, kind of uh, stopped, stopped existing. But yeah, and so I, 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 I dip back into the Sonic games every now and then. Um, oh gosh, what is that Sonic game that came out not too long ago? I have it for the Switch. It's like kind of fan made a little bit, or it's like made up of fan made levels. Sonic Mania. Sonic Mania. Sonic Mania is great. A ton of fun. Uh, but yeah, every other modern Sonic game I've played uh, <laughs> uh, really stinks, <laughs> in my opinion. Although I would sure. love to hear defenses of all of them. I would be thrilled to hear someone defend them. Um, yeah, and this was just one that I kind of was, uh, it was on my radar, but I had never played. I played it via, there's a collection for the Switch of just like Genesis games games and mm -hmm. the setup of this of this collection is the most charming thing in the world it is like a room it's like a bedroom that looks like it's from 1994 there's a little you know tube tv vcr in the room there's like posters on the wall there's like a streets of rage poster and you have a little shelf of games and you kind of click through the games and it when you pick one it shows it going into the top of the genesis which i just love and all of that just like pushes my nostalgia buttons yeah i've messed around with a lot of games on this collection but i've never really dipped into sonic 3d blast and yeah i just thought this would be kind of a fun excuse to look at a, a sonic game that that kind of uh, uh, escaped my escaped my radar did you play it to completion is my first question. <laughs> I played it to maybe the second part of the second level. Yeah. Uh, oh, we stopped at the same part. Made it to the Rusty Ruin. Rusty, um, you're yeah. talking about Rusty Ruin, yes. <laughs> Sounds like a 70s porn star. <laughs> oh, well, you've also got Gene Gadget, which is uh, a level name and kind of a guy you might have fix your car. Oh yeah, sure. I have <laughs> I did not get to Gene Gadget, but uh, he, he sounds like a he sounds like a hoot. Gene Gadget and Rusty Ruin are the next season of True Detective. I think that's, that's <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be Timothy Chalamet and uh, Aquafina. I don't know. <laughs> Who do they get for these things? Yeah, why not? Yeah. So Sonic 3D Blast has a pretty interesting history that we can uh, talk about as well. Yeah. Uh, it's It uh, was a Genesis release, and that's kind of how it's been ported forward, like in the Genesis collection. It also had a PC release and a Saturn release. Fun fact, the mm -hmm. three different versions all have three different styles of special stages. Oh. Notably, the best one is the Sega Saturn special stages, which Bo has edited a oops all special stages mod where you can just play basically the good part of the game which is the sonic you remember in sonic 2 like the tube style like special stages yeah is that but better or at least 3d They're definitely better they are definitely in 3d and just a, a little self plug here the sega extreme 29th anniversary saturn uh competition is closing like probably by the time people are listening to this the oops all special stages mod is in the competition we shall see how it forms. This is the uh, referendum on Saturn 3D Blast that we've been waiting for. <laughs> I mean, the Saturn's where it's at. Right. It, what, it was developed for the Sega Genesis. It was made by Traveler's Tales, who um, would later um, make John Burton very rich because he, he did uh, <laughs> Lego Star Wars. Yeah. And now he's doing the Funko game. Right. right? Oh, he became a millionaire and was like, ah, uh, and what what do millionaires do or uh they they make youtube videos and he uh ha he has an account and the first thing he did was like let me tell you how i made 3d blast let me tell you how i made sonic r the other <laughs> sonic games that they worked on 
for the Saturn. good stuff. Yeah, the the Saturn version of 3D Blast was almost well, it was sort of an afterthought. It was a Plan B because originally Holiday 1996 was supposed to give us Sonic Extreme. Mm. Uh, made by the Sega Technical Institute, and because of many things, we've we've talked about it before on the podcast, mainly nobody uh, really knew what they were doing, uh, and two people almost died, which is always good. <laughs> uh, they went, okay, this isn't coming out in time for Christmas. Uh, we have this emergency plan B. We're porting it to the Saturn. We'll make it look prettier. We'll add the new special stage. And the special stages were actually developed by Sonic Team, and that's probably why they are the best. It, it it gives you a peek into a 32-bit Sonic game that you would actually never end up getting because, well, yeah, the, the Saturn, I don't know if you know this, it didn't do too well in the, in the States or in Europe or anywhere except Japan and, and only then when people cared about Virtual Fighter. But, you know, Virtual Fighter is great. That didn't help here. Ah, so then the Dreamcast came into adventure and etc. Sonic history. Yeah. Exciting. You know, the Saturn release was put together like very quickly. Yes, it was like... We're going to port this thing forward. We're going to put some weather effects on it. We're going to slap in these yeah. special stages. And... They had like two months to do all, yeah. the entire conversion and the and the upglow. And so what was meant to be the swan song, essentially, of Sonic on the Genesis became, oh, this is the game that's going to go up against Super Mario 64. Huh, I wonder who won. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, there was also Knights. I guess that Sega tried to pivot towards Knights, and they're like, "This is the Mario killer." But uh, yeah. even though Knights is Mario, was fine. That, that was never. Mario, he didn't even hear about it. They, they were like Mario mosquitoes, really. It's a Mario. They were just like little, <laughs> right. little annoyances. But also fun curiosities. The Saturn version, I don't think, really plays any better than the Genesis version. However, uh, John Burton did release a director's cut that fixes kind of a lot of the things that I'm about to complain about. Yeah, you can I, read about, I read about that director's cut on Wikipedia, maybe a little too late uh, to, <laughs> to, to play it for this record. I would be fascinated to hear if anybody's played it and how it is. Oh, I think I, I think have. we've got a couple. Oh. It was good. Yeah, David, go for or Smoothies. <laughs> I was I was handed it to Smoothies. I feel like he's got a lot to say. He is he is the true believer. And there were things about it that I liked and things that I didn't. Um, if he fixes a lot of the, the platforming because, you know, it's not really a 3D game. It's a 2D sprite game and it has like a uh, what would you call it? Um, a fictional uh, Z axis to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so some platforms wouldn't work and he somehow managed to make them work like especially like moving ones but he he edited it to where like uh you could only get one chaos emerald per zone which was strange oh, yeah like, i like That's i like getting them all oh is it is it yeah i had to mod that out i thought it was one per act not one per zone on the saturn oh you're right it is yeah yeah okay yeah no no he made it one per zone um i, I like just getting as many as i can as soon as I can. So there are things about it I liked, things I didn't. And um, but I was overall impressed with the idea of someone doing this at all, especially the guy who made the original game. And presumably he had source code, or was he ROM hacking? He re he released an IPS patch, so I have no idea exactly how we. You, you'd assume he might have the the source code. I mean, he had all sorts of yeah. things. He released that uh, audio cassette of of song demos. He's like, I don't know if I should show this. Oh, well, what are they going to do? <laughs> Here you go. You know, he's he's uploaded footage of like the earliest builds. So clearly they have a fairly good archive of development, unlike some other companies like Sega. But, you know, uh, Sonic 3D Blast, yeah. in theory, checks a lot of boxes of what I think would be a great Sonic game, which is shitty graphics, isometric view, terrible controls. <laughs> no. OK, like there's a couple of cool ideas in this, you know, like it is not it is not without. Absolutely. Yes. I think there's a world where this is a good game. And I'm, you know, I'm I'm interested to play the director's cut at some point because, yeah, as far as like gameplay stuff, there's some there's some neat ideas. I like the idea of like you have to rescue every flicky. Me, too. I like how the flickies are designed in that like opening animatic. You see like the four or five flickies. There's like a green one, a blue one, a pink one, a red one. I kind of want to like say screw Team Sonic. I just want to follow these flickies around and see what <laughs> adventures they get into. They seem like they have like a bunch of personality. Flicky is a it's a, it's a Genesis game, right? About collecting yeah, birds. A... Like this is kind of a multiverse, you know, into the into the Sega verse type thing. Yep. I kind of like that idea. I like, you know, bringing in other Sega characters. It's a cool idea. Maybe at the end of the game, if you finish it, the Streets of Rage gang steps through a portal and says, <laughs> you know, we need somebody fast. Pango. 
thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a spiritual, spiritual sequel because Flicky was introduced in Sonic. Well, it was, it was in Sonic 1. It was an arcade game before. Uh, I love Flicky. Uh, I'd kiss him if he'd let me. <laughs> <laughs> now, is Flicky, because they, they use Flicky here to refer to like a race of interdimensional birds. So is it <laughs> is it like a Smurf thing where like one one Flicky is Flicky or a Yoshi thing is maybe a yeah, better example. Right, Yoshi. Yeah. Yoshi yeah. is a Yoshi. But is Flicky is a Flicky? Is that is that yeah? You know, fair to say. I think so. I think the blue Flicky is Flicky, the star of the game Flicky. Right. Yeah. And then I think there are other Flickies, which are the stars of Sonic 3D Blast, which is also known as Sonic 3D Flicky's Island. Right. Uh, but it's Flickies in the plural. It's not Flicky with a Y apostrophe S. It's Flickies I E S. Yeah. And this is how you know when it's a really good episode of a podcast when somebody's just breaking down how a word is spelled <laughs> <laughs> now does the island belong well, that is weird flicky? because the, yeah. it's like <laughs> knuckles is chaotic right, right. yes <laughs> knuckles is chaotic it's bizarre right. the that apostrophe belongs comes to after knuckles, the s but the island yeah. does not belong to the flickies no correct i mean maybe they bought it but the the island is called flicky island though why didn't they just call it that wait i don't understand the island is called flicky island but the game is called flicky's island Yes. Right. No. Flicky's I well, I mean the Flicky's own Flicky Island. I guess you know, <laughs> like, yeah, we're Americans and we mo own America Island. You know, that sort of thing. It makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I forget who came up who actually designed Flicky in, in the eighties. Uh, but it, that was the inspiration then for all the other right. animal friends in Sonic. They all have that CKY at the end, right? The rabbit is Pocky. You've got the the walrus, right? His name's Rocky, and then you have the the, the chicken who has been renamed because originally <laughs> it was just called Cucky, although it was supposed to be pronounced Kooky because of but but that got lost in translation. Yeah, maybe that's why originally they named the rabbit Johnny Lightfoot in the United States. They don't they didn't want to be like oh nobody understands Pocky, nobody understands Rocky. We're gonna call it mm. Porker Lewis. Re remember Porker, Porker Lewis, Lewis right. can't lose that great show. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I didn't. I never knew that those animals had names. Oh yeah, yeah. They had the the the, the, the whole lore. I mean, because originally I think they're supposed to all be Sonic's best friends. In in the U.S., they made it so all those animals are actually taught Sonic all of his stuff. Like, oh, uh, the rabbit taught him how to be fast, and the walrus taught him how to swim, even though Sonic doesn't swim famously right. and uh, didn't do a great job <laughs> no he was terrible at his job and so it's like oh yeah and then in sonic 2 they, they went oh and then tails taught him how to spin dash and that's why he has a new move uh in japan it's like sonic is the best at all these things his friends are easily captured okay. and they, all their names rhyme because i guess in sonic's world all species must rhyme except hedgehog mm -hmm. and human i do i do i did like about this game that like like the the animals being inside the robots has been part of sonic since the first game it was cool you know every time you jumped on a robot the little animal would fly away yeah um but to my knowledge it's never been like part of the gameplay right like here you have after you crush the robot you have to uh, you know get the flicky and take him to a dimensional ring thing yeah that matters. Um, and that's cool like that's part of something that i i really liked it i, I you know i like that it expands on the lore i like that it makes those little animal friends matter um yeah that's that's a cool part of it i think yeah I, i'm curious did you in 1996 have this idea that 2d is over we're doing 3d now everything has to be 3d in fact we're not even like doing stick figures in our notebooks anymore in 2d we're <laughs> we're gonna shade those things to make them spheres on sticks because that that was my experience it's like right. what sonic's going to 3d everything is 3d now yeah what were you doing in 96 in general where were you living uh, what were you studying i need to know all the details <laughs> <laughs> i guess i was 11 so i was probably studying like <laughs> right <laughs> tom sawyer yeah <laughs> so yeah i would have been 10 so yeah. yeah another thing that you can give this game credit for is the uh, the soundtrack all the sonic soundtracks are always very strong but this one in particular i, I think this is the first game that no it's not that sonoe that june sonoe he, he did sonic 3 and others yeah yes and then you got to richard jacks on this actor that's right right who would go on to do sonic r and uh now he's got that marvel money so he really hit the big time mm. Right. I will say I didn't love the music in this. Um, I, I again, I in general. You love the... 
bow. I and let that in. I never got an earworm from it. I never got a hook from it. To me, it just sounded like it. It sounded unpleasantly chaotic. It sounded like free jazz. <laughs> um, and you know, maybe I'm not as maybe you know, maybe I'm a pedestrian. I need a hook. Maybe I need you know, maybe I'm a. <laughs> Uh, you know, a a, uh, a a dumb music listener who needs those things. But yeah, to me, it really just sounded like Ornette Coleman's Sonic the Hedgehog soundtrack. <laughs> it's the beeps and the boops that they're not beeps right. and boops. Yes, in. exactly. You got to listen for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but in general, I agree that like Sonic Sonic soundtracks are so awesome. And even 06, okay. which is a really, really bad game, just a, just a real travesty. The music in that fucking rules. The music is terrific. Terrific music, one of the best soundtracks, and uh, I like 06. Uh, but moving on uh, <laughs> to... Uh, you got Princess Elise tattooed on your back. It's okay. Just admit it. I love 06. <laughs> uh, I love it so much. Um, but 3D Blast. 3D Blast. Who Also, there was the Game Gear th- Sonic Blast, which did not have 3D in it. It was a completely different game. Yeah. But it was called Sonic Blast. And also was going for like, because there was Donkey Kong Country and everyone was chasing Donkey Kong Country because it was like, oh my God, you can do 3D now. And so like Bo was saying, everything had to be 3D. And this was Sonic in 3D, sort of. And then the Game Gear side of it was like, well, they did it for Donkey Kong Land. There was Donkey Kong Country. Now we've got Land. Kind of looks 3D. Can we do that for the Game Gear? The answer is no, you cannot. But they tried. And they put it out there and you could play as Knuckles. So I kind of liked it, even though it's so, so, so bad. The only thing that it's got going for it is that the sprites are gigantic and you can really get a good look at them. And <laughs> that is it. Uh, Should have made Jordan play the Game Gear one. Yeah, right. See, I even had that Game Gear magnifying screen so I could oh, yeah, really sure. check out Knuckles on that Game Gear. <laughs> Every nook and cranny of Knuckles. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, there he is, right there. Right. I know Grant has thought a lot about Knuckles' nooks and crannies. I, I generally, his <laughs> the dreads and, and how he glides, but there's a couple other crannies in there, right? Are you, what, what are you Where setting are you going up for? Yeah. To talk I, about I'm just... Knuckles' his asshole? I, I didn't <laughs> give him a rectal exam. I just think he... I think when he glides, he's punching the air. All right. I mean, Knuckles turns thirty this year. When are you, when are you supposed to get checked up? Uh, you know the not not thirty. Not did 30? you get him anything, David? Did you get him anything this year? It's thirty. Right. You know what I got him? What'd you get him? You know what I got him? He's I got, got him a flower. I got him a flower because he's got he's it's his duty to protect the flower. So I gave him. I'm gonna give him one flower. Right to save the flower from evil deterioration. I always thought that was a little weird. Like, why are yeah, you talking about flowers? You guard the master emerald. You guard, a, you guard a giant glowing rock. Why are you talking about flowers? There's no flowers. Yeah, I feel like Sonic Adventure 1's Knuckles theme is a little too abstract, and <laughs> Sonic Adventure 2's is a little too specific. Yeah. <laughs> no one stops Knuckles' feet. Okay, I wasn't yeah. going to drive. <laughs> right. So in Adventure 1, Knuckles, he was like, I'm an English major, so I'm going to use yeah. a, lot of, uh, a lot of literary techniques. And then he, he dropped out, and that's why he's now a true literal man. Yeah. Hey, Knuckles appears in Sonic 3D Blast as a <laughs> helper. Did that did that's that right. excite you, Jordan? That's, that's how it all ties yeah, together. I so <laughs> me, I had to like I had to Google how the like friends worked in this game. Cause I'm you know, I got excited when I saw Knuckles. I, you know, I love the guy. And so yeah, I like you know, he's in that first stage, and I guess the actual thing that happens is if you have 50 rings and you find a friend. They'll take you to that bonus stage, but I didn't quite know what was going on. And I think you can give them the rings, but not go to the bonus stage if you like move too quickly. So I kind of just thought Knuckles was taking my rings. I eventually <laughs> like searched how this thing worked and figured it out, and then went into the bonus <laughs> stage and died in a half of a second. Oh wow! Uh, so, and I guess these bonus levels are probably pretty fun. Usually they are in Sonic games, but uh, yeah, I did not see much of mine. Uh, the Genesis one is not very fun. No, the, is no, it's yeah, pretty bad. You played the inferior, but I love that you thought he was just he was just stealing them from you. Was, yeah, I'm like, hey, Sonic. Knuckles. I mean, that kind of makes sense because yeah. Knuckles in last time we saw him, he was pressing switches, throwing bombs. And, right. And uh, yeah, and I did see Tails in that second level. And I love Tails, you know, always good to see Tails. And uh, yeah, he was like behind those like pillars that you need to be spinning to break. And I'm just like, I can't, I can't, I can't figure out how to how to get through <laughs> this. Um, it's just too unpleasant. So I I left Tails behind the barrier. 
Yeah, that's fair. I think um, moving Sonic is so difficult. He moves like he's, you know, he's oh, coming up with an analogy ahead of time would have been smart here. But he moves like he's got sponges on a wet floor and he's made of spaghetti. Like right. He moves stupidly. The, it's the deacceleration, I guess. It's like he's just very slippery. And that becomes very tedious when you're trying to collect 50 rings and not run into uh, an obvious trap or enemy and you lose the rings. Then what are you going to do? Can't go to the special stage. Can't get the Chaos Emerald. Why even bother finishing it? I get the bad ending. Yeah. That's why I didn't finish it. I My yeah. strategy for this, because killing the enemies is is like part of progressing, right? You have to get your flicky from the robot. And I like that. I think that's great, because usually like in Sonic games, you can kind of just avoid enemies. You don't really get anything from killing them for the most part. Um, so I liked that it was part of the gameplay. Um, but you know, it is just so hard to control where Sonic is going at any point. My strategy became get some rings, intentionally run into the bad guy. You get that little bit of invincibility. That's when you kill him. And then you find more yeah, rings yeah. and do it again. <laughs> yeah. So that that was counter strike. My my strategy for progressing. Smart. Yeah. You guys have an inferior strategy. The the, the correct strategy is play it when you're a kid. <laughs> that is ah, right. That's right. In ninety six you would have had it yeah. entirely memorized. Right. You would have exactly. shouted you would have screamed at anyone who dared said it was a bad game. <laughs> you had a you had a game pro magazine that gave you all the tips. <laughs> Do you remember the Archie Comics Sonic Blast adaptation comic? I sure do. Um <laughs> David do you <laughs> do I I remember comics? Yeah, I remember Sonic Blast. Do you know? Do you know? I bet you even can do this. Do you know why I remember the Sonic Blast uh, issue? Well, the word flicky is stylized every single time. So and and Sonic grabs a ball of water and throws it at point zero 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 one seconds. And uh, That's true. Yeah. And there's a two page spread, which I think is meant to make you think. Uh, you know how to beat the game when in fact you don't no those are all those are all incorrect no, well those are all great moments in the comic <laughs> and i'm i'm blown away that you remember it with such specificity because all of that is like sending me like yeah shoot i remember those panels but what i remember <laughs> most is that was uh, a very special issue because sonic and sally kissed, whoa, kissed on the page whoa. on the page she gave him a little like, big old smoochy uh -oh. on the cheek he got a little oh embarrassed gosh. he ran away but that was huge right huge. right because sega, sega wouldn't, huge. wouldn't let them kiss because you know in issue 50 the director's cut which was actually sonic super special number six there was this full page spread of sonic and sally kissing and ken penders had to fight with art with sega to let them have it because they didn't want to show that sonic would kiss a girl because then it would mean he was in a relationship and sonic can't be in a relationship he's too cool cool people don't date <laughs> Didn't they kiss all the time? I feel like they were always kissing. Yeah, it was too much kissing. They kissed a few times. Yeah, it was. They, def they definitely. I don't know how much how much editorial control the Archie people had, but you'd think if they had more, it would be constantly Sonic in a love triangle. It would be constantly Sonic <laughs> yeah. trying to choose right. between Sally and, uh... and someone else. Well, right, they made Sally. They yeah, they sort of did the opposite. They had Sally like, oh, she likes Sonic, but then they introduced this guy named Jeffrey St. John and he became the other man. <laughs> Wait, the who's that? The, Jeffrey St. John or St. Yeah, yeah. if you want to pronounce it in, in, the, in the proper way. It, he's he's a skunk. He's Why part of the Why does he have a normal name? <laughs> he also wears a beret. He wears a beret. He's got, uh, he's got the Chewbacca oh, cool. paramilitary pouch. Belt. Yeah, the Kingdom of Acorn Royal Secret Service is what he's wow. a part of. And so he is mm -hmm. meant to protect the king and the lineage. And Sally is part of that lineage. And he did a little smooch with the lineage. And that caused a lot of kids to get upset. Like, why would Sally want to date this jerk right, when right. Sonic's right there? The, eventually there was a love triangle between sonic sally and a character named mina mongoose okay who could run as fast as sonic so oh, it's God. like whoa yeah now we can do fast things together but she ended up dating a guy who looked like her brother which i thought was weird uh every every time i read it i thought they were siblings and it was like no this is my boyfriend i'm like are you sure sounds like, juicy <laughs> i gotta get my hands on these comics right There's a love triangle in sonic 06 uh, where you have to yeah. choose in the trial of love <laughs> yeah. between Amy and Princess Elise. Right. You got to you... choose one or the other. No, I never got there. You never got to the trial of love? How deep in those? Pretty deep in the game. 
it's like the last stage in the Sonic campaign, or it's like before the la- like to open up the last stage. It's pretty. It's understandable. Well, who that, did you choose? Like, Let's go around the circle. I want to hear whoever who chose. <laughs> oh, who did I choose? Well, I would have chose Elise. I chose Elise. You like a human, yeah. So- well, Sonic likes humans. I think it's established. Like, right when it, when Sonic was created, his creator designed him a girlfriend named madonna and she's just this yeah. you know sultry short blonde hair it's kind of a jessica rabbit type i i think yeah. i vaguely remember this from you know some sort of sonic lore thing yeah like the the reason was because when oshima designed sonic and showed it to the people he worked with like all the the uh, female employees i guess looked and went "Ooh, sonic he's so cute he's like a little baby boy and he went no no sonic's in he's an adult he's a man cool guy and designed a human girlfriend basically to go yeah a kid wouldn't date a woman <laughs> only a an adult would date a woman an adult uh, animal would <laughs> <an> adult- <laughs> weird <laughs> exactly look i don't i didn't design it but yeah she uh she disappeared the official reason was because she would have resembled too closely the Mario Peach dynamic. Oh, but, okay, okay, okay. Right. At least that's sure. what they say. There might have been uh, something else going on there. I don't know. Uh, all I know is that she was just, she's not bad. She was just, she's just drawn, drawn that way. That way. <laughs> Man who can make her laugh. <laughs> Rabbit. Good movie. Who played Jessica Rabbit? Kathleen Turner. Kathleen Turner. Do we think Kathleen Turner? has played a Sonic the Hedgehog game. <laughs> That's a good question. Only Sonic Frontiers. I think she's only played Sonic Frontiers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, yeah. so she has no uh, f- uh, point of comparison. She loves it. Is uh, Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's all new to her. I don't blame her. I don't know much about Kathleen Turner, but... Uh, yeah. uh, neither I mean, do I. I. That's why I, like, I'm, I'm vamping as I Google her name and also the phrase Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> and I realized I didn't know how to spell Kathleen right. Yeah. Uh, oh, somebody did a fan casting and said she would be great as Rouge the Bat. Rouge the Bat. <laughs> I forgot about Rouge the Bat. Oh. <laughs> how could <laughs> I? <laughs> yeah. Have you seen her? I, you... <laughs> okay. I mean, my eyeballs popped out of my skull. So yeah, I've seen her. My phone <laughs> popped out of my mouth like a carpet. Oh, so yeah, I've seen her. <laughs> exactly. Hubba, 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 I said. Right. Uh, I, don't, I don't see anything outright that's like, yeah, she definitely knows about Sonic. Um, yeah. Not like this usually works, but I mean, it did that one time. So that when, when it was uh, Prince Harry and it was like, oh, yeah, he's definitely played Sonic. It was his How favorite do we game. know that Prince Harry has played Sonic? What's the evidence? Right, there was a GeoCities website that had an interview or like a profile of him. It was like favorite game Sonic Two, and it was like, wow. I was like, sure, why not? I'll I'll take it as canon. This is my head canon for Prince Harry. I've got a a lot of them. The whole royal family. What about Prince? You know, Prince Rogers Nelson, Prince uh, Purple oh, Rain Prince. Purple uh, Rain. <laughs> did he play Sonic in his lifetime? No, you don't think so. I think almost definitely. Really? I think he did. Yeah. Wow. I absolutely think Prince played Sonic. I think they probably like gave him an early copy. Just like if you're Prince, you're just getting stuff. I don't know. I mean, didn't Prince sort of have like a a rivalry with Michael Jackson to some degree? And Michael was like all in on Sonic. Right. So I feel like Prince would have been like, no, I can't be a fan of Sonic. Mm-hmm. I own a Super Nintendo. Like. <laughs> I, I feel like that's what would Prince have happened. Prince a big Bonks adventure guy. <laughs> yeah, maybe he went Turbo Graphics. He's the other guy who owned the Turbo. Yeah, graphics. I mean, you know, yeah. Prince. Prince is all about you know throwing his curveballs, doing something mm-hmm. we wouldn't expect. So yeah, maybe Prince is all in on the Turbo Graphics sixteen. I could see that. Oh, did you guys know that Prince made a CD-ROM video game? No. Oh, called Prince Interactive. Kind of maybe was it one of those music video maker games? I think that was wasn't it canceled? Right. I do vaguely remember. Yeah, like the Make My Video. They did Crisscross, Cross. uh, Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. I think there was supposed to be a Prince one, and it never came out. Uh, or at least on the Sega CD. Wikipedia says Prince Interactive did come out for the PC, and it's kind of like a mist. Oh, what? Wow. <laughs> right. Yeah. Whoa. I guess I'm only familiar in a Sega context where it definitely didn't come out. But right. The reviews described it as dopey but fun. <laughs> I'll take that. Not as not as not as sexy as you would hope, right? Knowing Prince's catalog, yeah, I think it would be hornier. Yeah, <laughs> and Prince did live long enough to see Rouge the Bat, so I think that <laughs> is good. Yeah, 
He didn't. I think he passed before Sonic Frontiers came out, so he didn't know uh, <laughs> that Tails is a burden. But he did know uh-huh. about jiggle physics. He did <laughs> in Sonic Adventure. Two. Uh, right. Let's see. Uh, anyway, Sonic 3D Blast. Uh, back to Sonic 3D Blast. Jordan, yeah. what else is there to say about Sonic 3D Blast? Um, did you have a Sonic three dimensional blast playing? Sonic 3D Blast. Uh, I, I mean, I here's I had fun. You know, I had fun finally figuring out what it was because it, it, you know, it had been in the back of my head for the, for a while, and this was a fun excuse to like see what it was all about. Uh, but no, I did not. Uh, playing the game was no was no fun. I was I was I was pretty bummed about it. Uh, yeah, just you know <laughs> everything you mentioned the the difficulty of control, the kind of unclear objectives. I don't think we've talked about that. I feel but... like that's that's your fault for waiting thirty years to play it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean uh, 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 roast me. I, it, I and, you know, and I, I think we all have we all played bad games as a kid, but just because. You know, you got one or two games a year, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe you could like rent one, or maybe you could borrow one from a friend. So you kind of just like had to make the most of every game. And I could see if I like, you know, if this was my game that I got for my twelfth birthday, I would have sat down and beat it and and felt great about it. I think, but yeah, just I think now as an adult, and especially in that context where you have a little cartridge that has thirty or forty Genesis games on it, like it is just hard to. Hard to hard to keep playing this when you know that Streets of Rage is right there, Vector Man <laughs> right there. You're going right to Comic Zone. Oh man, yeah, yeah. Comic Zone is right there. <laughs> Comic Zone is pretty fun. The first level, and then it's so hard. Uh, at least I, scary. for me, oh, yeah. I've never gotten anywhere in Comic it's Zone. It's way too difficult. Jordan, before we, I, I want to ask you about uh, the new project that you are working on that I'm excited to learn about. But I also want to, like, sure. if you're open to this, let's just sort of toss a bunch of, like, yeah, yeah. Sonic topics at you. There's a bunch of, like, Sonic things that I'm curious about, just your take on them. So, for example, sure. favorite Sonic game, least favorite Sonic game. Oh, okay. I think favorite one, this is, I don't, I don't want to have a cold take, but I'm going to have a cold take. It's two. Uh, I mean, you know, that's a, it's a safe bet. It's my favorite bands, the Beatles, uh, my favorite movies, Jaws, (laughs) you know, it's just something that you can say and it's fine. Like you know me all my life. Yeah. 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 You can just have like a good, fine opinion. Right. Yeah. But I think it is. I mean, Sonic 2 is so much fun and yeah, just, just the, the, you know, all those elements gelling in a way, uh, uh, to just just make a make a really great game. I mean, the music and Tails. Tails is such a great, memorable character. I think in the same way that I knew Sonic was coming from reading video game magazines, I like knew Tails was coming, and I was so excited about Tails. Um, so yeah, I, Sonic Two is my favorite. Um, least favorite Sonic game. Um, oof, boy, tough not to say Sonic 06. Sonic 06 really stinks. <laughs> There's this, you know, and it's so frustrating to play. And I and I, I did play it to talk about it on a podcast that's why i consume all media to talk about them on podcasts <laughs> so i uh you know i wanted to like progress so i had more stuff to talk about and there is i believe it's the fight with silver the hedgehog <laughs> so yeah. hard. it's no use it's, it's no, no use. use so that because <laughs> the voice acting in that game is so insane and yes every time you die in that game silvers goes it's no use and that is every time i fail at something in my life it's no use it's plays no in my use. head like every, <laughs> yeah every time uh yeah i break a dish or <laughs> every time <laughs> the garbage bag breaks on my way to taking it out it's no use so yeah i think sonic 06 least favorite sonic game uh yeah that was the question you asked me yes okay that's very fair <laughs> favorite sonic character Least favorite Sonic character. Ooh, favorite Sonic character. I think it's Tails. I think it's Tails. I like that he's the, you know, kind of uh, excitable kid version of Sonic. I I like that, you know, where Sonic can be kind of over it. Tails is excited. Least favorite character. Ooh, let's go Big the Cat. (laughs) Uh Not a, yeah, Big the Cat. (laughs) Uh Oh boy, did I step in Uh it? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Look, all I'm saying is that I've never written a, a, an unpublished 600 page script about Big the Cat's adventures. Oh boy. <laughs> Big the Cat is definitely not in my cap tree right here. Oh, yeah. Right. There he is. He's wow. watching it. He's already <laughs> judging it. Uh, Vector the Crocodile. I'm changing my answer. Vector the Crocodile. Bro. Yeah, that's a better answer. Fuck Vector. <laughs> Sorry, Vector. Uh, early, er, early skinny Vector. Yeah, but uh, okay. Vector in yeah. from Heroes is a bit annoying. If all if all you think about big is like oh in Sonic Adventure and you're fishing, I think 
that makes sense why a lot of people do it but just innocently you know like you could just nestle into him yeah and like fall asleep you're right he's he's, he's like a snorlax <laughs> a, to- a totoro a totoro, a totoro energy. yeah yeah <laughs> you know, I can come around on Big the Cat. I can see myself right. changing my yeah, opinion. We'll, on Big we'll the convert cat. you. It's a, <laughs> it's not a cult or anything, uh, but there are dues you have to pay. Sounds like it's kind of a cult. But... <laughs> a lot of cults tell you they're not a cult, right? Well, Sonic Cult disbanded. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, this isn't a, this isn't a cult, but we do have a, you know a lot of literature in our trunk that we're very excited for um, you to read yeah. and a pamphlet. Yeah, pamphlet. Yeah. It's all pointing to cult. This is all <laughs> pointing to cult. Yeah. And there are sex parties. Uh, and they're worse than you think. <laughs> they're worse than you think. They're worse than you think. Yeah, the FBI has kind of been on our tail a little bit uh, now that you mention it. But you guys are going to wind up driving cross country with a mummified Grant in the back seat. <laughs> oh, wow. He likes it. <laughs> Love is One. Anybody see that documentary? Love is One. Anyway. Is that one of the cult documentaries? It was one of those cult documentaries. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my dear darling wife, Ashlyn, loves those. And so I sometimes am paying attention and sometimes not while I'm playing the Switch and playing Sonic, various Sonic Mm -hmm. games. Uh, Bo, David, Smoothie, you have any Sonic? Can I ask the ask the the panel a question, please? Sure. What's an underrated Sonic game? What's an underrated or, you know, like one that kind of went under the radar that like, you know, a guy like me who has like very fond memories of Sonic, but, you know, maybe hasn't loved some of the modern games. What's the what's the one I can go back to and give a shot? Um, the the silence is damning, I feel. Uh, <laughs> I feel like Unleashed was underrated. I feel like Unleashed is great. Y- yeah. Unleashed is underrated. Of, of all the modern ones, I throw that out there. Is that the werewolf one? Yeah. Yeah, there's always like a, a caveat of like, right. oh yeah, this one's underrated. You just have to ignore this one thing about it. Sure. And you'll exactly. love it. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you play Sonic Generations? I did not play Generations. Is the generations fun? Generations is good. I would, I would say I would say that one because okay. it's it it is the most fun of the modern eras games, and it has like the classic uh, a pretty close approximation of like the uh, classic physics, and it plays they all the levels are pretty fun, and it, the boost levels are great. And then you know if you like it, then games like Unleashed are there, or or Colors, Sonic Colors, or yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I, I would say Generations or Colors are both okay, very good answers cool. for right. underrated to the masses right. among sonic fans that maybe they're properly rated and maybe <laughs> yeah. unleashed is underrated but. yeah among sonic fans it's like those are like mm-hmm. yeah we all agree that those are good or like we <laughs> right. generally don't fight too much when people say they're good right a, a couple of the uh, uh later handheld titles probably as well like uh the original sonic advance on the game boy advance oh yeah uh not yeah and then uh there are two sonic rush games i think sonic rush adventure Adventure's is a better game yeah. but the first sonic rush has the better soundtrack. It, it's done by the same guy who did uh, a bunch of the Jets at Radio music. Oh, neat. If you're, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think those are fun. Um, personally, I'd avoid Advance 2. If you like Advance 1, uh, don't, don't go to the next one. Just enjoy what you had. Okay. You know, it's like, a, you know, a long lost love summer in paris sure Just enjoy what you have had. The memory yeah smile because it happened <laughs> exactly maybe maybe that's the right answer maybe <laughs> the most underrated sonic game is just just holding that memory and not yeah. <laughs> not putting any more on top of it right. uh maybe it's not necessary jordan would love to hear uh more about yeah i know you're kind of doing like a, a podcast circuit and uh you've got a new project to promote and we'd love to hear about it and uh invite listeners who may be familiar with some of your work or not all of your work uh more about it yeah absolutely uh gosh speaking of comic books uh i've got a new graphic novel coming out this year it's called youth group now is it as hot as the sonic archie comics no nothing is (laughs) (laughs) but i think it is very entertaining uh youth group it is a uh, ya horror comedy it is about a bunch of goofy teenage exorcists um uh, i the art is by a great artist named bowen mcgurdy um, who did a great series called Spectre Inspectors and has done some work with Marvel. Yeah, it's like, it's kind of, it's set in the 90s. It's about, it's about a bunch of kids in a very goofy Bible study who uh, have to, you know, sing song parodies and, uh, you know, make abstinence charts, but then have to fight actual demons after church is over. Um, yeah, I like grew up in one of these goofy Bible studies and it always kind of wanted to like, 
set something there and yeah this was uh this was a totally a fun project it is um available for pre-order now you can do that at amazon you can do that at barnes and noble you can do that at your local indie bookstore uh or you can go to bit.ly slash youth group book uh bit.ly slash youth group book um yeah you can see the cover you can see a bunch of the uh a bunch of the art and uh, all those pre-order links will be right there uh pre-orders man do they help books a lot? They sure do. Uh, why? Don't know. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> I don't. I think we all know not to pre-order video games. Books? Yes, do it. Very good. <laughs> we love it. We judge the book by its cover absolutely very favorably. If the, and yes. those links are in the description, dear listener. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. Thank It'll you, be thank a you. day one patch. Yeah. <laughs> right. It'll be like a cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah. The book isn't great when it's released, but everybody agrees the book eventually got good. Um, yeah. So... Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. If it if it sounds cool, uh, it's got some. It's got Buffy the Vampire Slayer vibes. It's got uh, Shaun of the Dead vibes. Maybe a little Riverdale in there. Oh. Um, I went to a school in the '90s where the youth group kids were kind of like the cool kids. I did too. Oh man, I'm not in the youth group. I'm kind of on the outs here. Where did you go to school? Uh, rural Missouri. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a that's a weird part of it. Is like is like they did make it seem just like a fun place that teens can hang out and talk about teen problems and like <laughs> you know we don't need alcohol to have fun we're just like totally silly and random and you know the youth pastor you know made us do jumping jacks in the parking lot and it was all kind of tied up in this in the christian ska scene too like oh, oh man yeah. it's like i love ska okay. music but yep. I, I don't really love jesus it's insane <laughs> no but that five iron frenzy is so good hey hard to deny i know super tones <laughs> there are there's sadly we I, we were not able to to slip in a ska joke but um right you, you you've done some work for archie right a couple of the yeah horror... I've, I've read some of them but i'm just like i don't really know who wrote what so i'm just like yeah horror your name was there once yeah <laughs> this is a <laughs> yeah. terrible question um i think i was thinking more like oh yeah you wrote art you wrote a one of the horror archie uh, stories and then i went wait sonic used to be at archie yeah do you feel like you missed out that you didn't have a relationship with Archie until after they got rid of the Sonic license. Oh, totally. Yeah. No, I would love to pitch some Archie Sonic stories. That would be so much fun. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There are still Sonic comics, right? It's like boom, there were boom comics or something. They're they're published at IDW. IDW. Um, right. I know I know some other uh some some other podcaster with the last name of McElroy. Uh, wrote a story once for them so oh really could, uh, oh i didn't know that yeah so okay. you could um check that out because all podcasters know each other so <laughs> i actually do know those guys <laughs> yeah so <laughs> yeah it's, I, I figured you did yes but so yeah just show up at their house right when when no one's there do you think the lady from serial has played sonic <laughs> <laughs> yes i do I do. As Adnan, has Adnan Syed <laughs> played Sonic? Yeah. That guy's played Sonic. I think, yeah, Sonic Adventure was probably the last game he played before oh, he went in. Right. And then when he got out, he played uh, Adventure 2. He finally played like, Adventure 2 and saw Rouge and was like, look at all I, what I missed out on. They're like, yeah, welcome welcome back. Ah, oh, the Sonic games got really bad while you were in there. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh man, glad I missed that. <laughs> Jordan, it's been so fun uh, having you with us to talk about Sonic 3D Blast, uh, talk about Sonic in general. Uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, now we're going to have David play us out. Oh. And we'll have uh, the links to Jordan's project, other things in the description. Yeah, that's right. We, we've reached the end once mm. again. Beautiful. That's right. You've never opened one of these and gone, wait, the runtime is infinity? That's because that's literally impossible. So unfortunately, we have to reach the end of another episode of Sonic Weekly, and we hope you, the listener at home, have enjoyed hearing those dulcet tones, the dulcet tones of us and the two songs we always play during it. That's right. If you enjoyed it, you should. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to this wonderful shindig of ours. For whatever podcatcher of choice you have. Or YouTube. We're on YouTube now. Or YouTube. Oh, that's right. That's nice to announce that we did, did finally open up a YouTube channel. So if you're like, I hate Spotify and I've never used anything with with an Apple podcaster thingy, ba ba ba, you go, whatever our YouTube, we have, is it a URL or can you just search it? <laughs> YouTube.com slash Sonic Weekly. It's just Sonic there Weekly. Okay. But I think you've got to be there for a while, but uh, just search it. Sonic just Weekly. We're the Sonic, only one. We're right. And then. Uh, 
Right. Oh, I don't have time to search. I gotta have the. the you can have time to search for That's Sonic right. Weekly. Give us the upvote. Give us the rating. Do it. Do it. Like, comment, and subscribe. Pre-order Jordan's <laughs> book. For God's sakes. Right. Yes. Thank you, Jordan, for being here. Thank you over there. Yeah. Thank you. This was so much fun. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa. Yes. And of course, thank you, Smoothies, being in the corner for the edit. He's the one that makes this show listenable. And of course, if you want to reach out to us, you can always email us at sonicweeklypodcast at gmail Com. and that's how you get into our discord server email us say give me that link and we'll say who are you here's the link we'll figure out who you are later we'll check your id at the door whoa and uh because i'd never want them to feel left out i have to thank Bo and grant for both uh you know being here existing living the life that they want to live and having sonic be a part of that existence because what is existence without Sonic the Hedgehog? It's empty and meaningless and depressing and very slow. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. And it's definitely not a cult. So <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it kinda is. Right. <laughs> it's just dues. Very, very expensive dues. <laughs> 